campus reception on April 13th. I now ask the Outstanding Student Award recipients to stand as they're able when I read their names and to remain standing until all recipients have been announced so that we can acknowledge their accomplishments. Arthur John Carlson, the graduate recipient from the College of Community Studies and Public Affairs. Jordan Berg, the undergraduate recipient from the College of Community Studies and Public Affairs. Susan Ann Gust, the undergraduate recipient from the College of Individualized Studies. Jana Gagan, the, un the graduate recipient from the College of Nursing and Health Sciences. Thazine Liang, the undergraduate recipient from the College of Nursing and Health Sciences. Please join me in congratulating these students. <laughs> Metropolitan State University is proud to be a Beyond the Yellow Ribbon company. It's our privilege to serve more veteran and active military students than any other college and university in the state of Minnesota. They enrich our learning community every day. At this time, I would like to ask all students, faculty, staff, and audience members who are veterans, active military, or military families to stand as they are able so that we may greet them. Thank you very much. At each commencement, our featured address is presented by a representative of our graduating students, speaking to us today on behalf of the outstanding student group and of all graduates is Mr. Jordan Berg, the undergraduate outstanding student recipient for the College of Community Studies and Public Affairs, who is receiving his Bachelor of Science degree today. Please welcome Jordan. Hello, distinguished guests and fellow graduates. My name is Jordan Berg. I have to say this moment is just absolutely so surreal. Y'all look amazing. Uh, I can't believe I could say I'm now a college graduate. I'm the first in my family to be actually be able to say that. I've attended Metro State since uh, the fall of 2016, where I decided to major in law enforcement and minor in criminal justice. And in this very moment, I'm one step closer to a dream of mine, becoming a police officer. I always wanted to be a police officer, but got talked out of it for one reason or another. For the first part of my adult life, I, I worked in the um, service industry in one facet or another. My whole life has been about service. It's an honor and great privilege to be here at commencement. And I wanna thank everyone for being here today. You all are part of the reason why we students are celebrating this momentous event in our lives. Thank you to all Metropolitan State University community, from my fellow students to the president of the university, staff members, instructors, maintenance, and custodial staff. We've made it all together. I need to say a very special thank you to my biggest supporters out there, my mama, my family. Uh, I didn't walk in my high school commencement. Uh, since then, I told my mom, uh, I'll walk in college so someday, you know, uh, if I go. Uh, now I'm not only participating, but I'm speaking as the outstanding student. I had no idea. Thank you. I didn't know I'd be doing this in front of so many people, so uh, yeah. I hope it was worth the wait, Mama. Many years ago, I read a book that changed my life. It was a New York Times bestseller. It was called The Purpose Driven Life. I was, as I was reading that book, uh, I took all sorts of notes, and uh, on all, all those notes, I lived by one. When you talk with people, no matter the size, don't you ever be like a salesman trying to sell them anything. Be like a happy customer and let your enthusiasm show. Let them decide what they want to leave with. So with that, I'm going to tell you a little quick story about me and why I'm so thankful uh, for, for this moment and for all of you, and don't worry, I'm not going to try and sell you anything, so... I'll tell you a little bit more about my background. I'm the oldest of six kids, and I know some of you might be thinking, well, that's a lot. People would actually ask my mother, why did you want six kids? 
she would respond without hesitation, because I didn't want seven. <laughs> the first part of my life, I was sheltered from the world. I believed it was because of some oppressive ideologies and addictive behaviors that afflicted my parents. I didn't know the extent of how bad it really was because my mother was really good at disguising things. Uh, that was until the night I decided to grow up real fast and saw more of what was going on. At 12, I decided to finally stick up for my mother. I finally started to notice what was going on. She couldn't hide it anymore. I told my drunken father, grow up. A short time after confronting my father, the police showed up took my father away and offered us support to help get through some of our experiences with substance abuse. They were for, uh, some of the first stepping stones that laid precedent for us to work on our family dynamics as we moved forward. When the police left that night, I'm sure they never thought about how doing their jobs and lending some kind words of wisdom would change my life forever. When they left my house and family, I knew what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wanted to be just like them, a police officer. My family went through the thick of it all, divorce, abuse, homelessness, addictions, being raised in a single parent home, and many other hard times. You think of it, we probably experienced it. To give you a little bit more perspective, mama used to say to us that we were so poor that if you imagine the, the poverty level was here, we were way down here. So you can imagine it was tough but it was all made me who I am today and what I stand for. My family and I found our way out of the destructive cycles because, because of other people had decided to serve us. We became a part of a bigger community and a bigger purpose. They taught us what it truly meant to love others without any strings. Their philosophy was love God and love others, period. We grew learning how to love and serve other people in our community. We believed love is a verb that's best shown when you serve. In doing so, it becomes contagious and it encourages others to want and need that love that we now know. My experiences have allowed me to relate to those who have and are going through challenging times. It's my hope as someone who will continue to serve the community members through the toughest times that I will be like those police officers who helped my family when we needed it the most. When I attended college for the first time, I, re I realized I wasn't ready for it yet. I left with a few Fs and some incompletes. Later on, I'd find out that it'd be much harder to get back into school, and because of that, I moved out of my family's house, got an apartment, and supported myself with various restaurant jobs. I did this for a few years and loved it. But that was until one day I heard an older woman on the radio say, at the end of your life, it isn't the things that you did that you're going to regret the most. It's the things you didn't do. After that, I asked myself, is there anything I would regret at the end of my life not doing? The answer was yes. I would regret not going back to college and chasing my dream of becoming a police officer, just like the ones that showed up that night for my family. I ended up re-enrolling in Inver Hills and trans uh, transferred to Metro. I was still serving food on the side, but now I had one of those five-year plans. My, uh, my, my life has been about serving people, and it still is. But I told myself then, put more of the focus on you. If you get better, you can do more things. Improve your skills and do things that matter more, and that I did here at Metro. My first day at Metro, I'm sitting there in class, and the instructor begins, begins with, and I'm, I kid you not, you are not your grade. I thought to myself, oh no, oh God, what, what, what did I just do? What did, what did I get into here? This was an elective class. I, I could have dropped it, but I told myself, you aren't going to drop any more classes. So I stuck with it, and it actually turned out to be one of the best classes I ever had. That instructor, along with every other instructor I had at Metro State, gave me lots of tools to evaluate and understand people from different communities better. In my time at Metro State University, I learned a lot of statutes, theories, statistics, and procedures. Those are all important, but not as much as those that, uh, but not as much as the relationships I built with some of you, along with the skills we shared together as a team, working through projects and deadlines. 
But most of all, I learned that to be a better person, it takes surrounding yourself with diversity. And by being an active agent in your community, by encouraging and educating others. To sum it up, Metro gave me a better sense of we. Through every interaction, I left with some, something encouraging. One of my law enforcement instructors said it best. She said, we're all called to service. That man on the street is someone's special someone. That woman is someone's mother. They're all someone's special someone. You can fill in the blank. You get to choose what footprints you want to leave on their lives. Sometimes we actually only see a person once, just like those police officers that night. Other times we see them all the time. Regardless of what kind of day you are having, you're going to leave a footprint on someone else's life. What footprint do you want to leave? So it's with a full and thankful heart I say to you, Metro, and everything you've taught me, thank you for giving me a better chance at a better life. I will forever remember you and your footprints as I hope to leave others with mine. Thank you.